So, there was this girl I met in early 2021. I met her through the Discord of a streamer I associated myself with at the time. Uh, she was really kind, and we found ourselves with like some pretty similar tastes. Uh, we we both like James A. Caster, we both like Wilbur Sutt and Jay Schlepp, but not in an obsessive way, just in like a, a normal fan way. In fact, she, uh, she vetted this quote that I used in the end of my OK Computer video. Um, it, I really find it really funny. Uh, it's, Jay Schlatt is my favourite comfort streamer, except he isn't comforting, he doesn't stream. And, uh, well, she... Actually, this... This isn't the right starting point for this video, is it? The Beginner's Guide was one of the first games to make me view games as an art form. I already knew games were art, but in my head that art was like somehow limited. Games started to be playable first, they started to fit into genre conventions, that was like what I thought in my 12 or 13 year old mind. The Beginner's Guide was the first game I played that challenged that. It made me realise that games don't have to be playable in the conventional sense to be art, to be powerful. The game itself was more or less an interactive slideshow of other games. The whole thing is narrated by Davy Reardon, the very real game developer who previously worked on the Stanley Parable, and it follows this fantastic story of Davy talking about a developer friend named Coda. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davy Reardon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. Reardon outright states at the beginning that the story is true, that Coda was a real person and that all the games Reardon shows us throughout the whole game were made by Coda. And while whether it's true or not isn't important for this video specifically, I still think it's food for thought. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. Reardon uses Coda's games as a kind of coping mechanism. He sees something that he loves in Coda's games. Reader describes it as a kind of wholeness that he found in them. He really enjoyed seeing these unorthodox games. Uh, one especially was where to access this room filled with other interesting game ideas. You had to climb a staircase that as you climbed it, you slowed down and it would take an insane amount of time to climb all the way up. Luckily, Davy does speed you up in order to let you reach the room a lot quicker. A thing Reardon especially liked is how a lot of the games are never really finished. Coda didn't see that as a necessity. Some games are left in a broken state, some are impossible to finish, others have no clear end goal, Others have features said to be in the game that are never actually there, like this game is apparently online and every chat box is from a player, except it's not. Every single one is from Coda. But eventually the games take a turn that seems to an outsider, to a viewer, or at least from what Reardon shows us as self-destructive. For example, Coda starts to really focus on making prison games, games that feel isolated and make you feel trapped. And by focus on, I mean he makes a ton, especially compared to how willing to drop other concepts Coda seemed. This near obsession with prison games adds to that isolation and the uncomfortableness you can feel while playing them. But in actuality, it's just unorthodox. We never meet Coda, we only see him through Reedon's eyes and Reedon's perspective of what he shows us. But maybe it's just Coda continuing that unorthodox streak. Like the game he made is just walking through an increasingly abstract setting, starting from a house to this descent that you just fall all the way down to this concrete hallway, and then this little prison that originally made you wait a full hour before letting you go. Luckily, Davey edits the game to open it early. Yes, the work feels personal, while it could be about a creator hitting his own craft to such a degree he wants to destroy it, partially caused by running out of ideas but also an overall eye on those creations for his mental health, but equally so it could just be a story that Reedon extrapolates that feeling from. Reedon only really focuses on the prison aspect and the isolation when it becomes blatantly obvious. He doesn't really mention the prisons and isolation are just a running theme from pretty early on. Eventually, after Coda's game seemed even more self-destructive, Reardon started to show them to other people without Coda's permission. It's never fully spelled out, but by the nature of a lot of the games Coda makes, they're for him, not for another person. Not for some grand amount of people, but just for himself, and the very small amount of people he originally specifically chose to show them to. 
But the games are so unorthodox they're borderline unplayable by conventional understandings of the term. One is a never ending house cleaning game, another is that staircase one on the many, many impossible prison games. So Reedon changes things to make them his kind of playable, to push the message and narrative that he sees further. He basically does what a lot of video essayists do on this very platform, what I'm doing in this very video. I'm cherry picking parts of the game to sell my narrative, and out of how I see myself in Reedon, how we both failed people we saw was close to us. Reedon failed Coda by adding parts to his games that were never meant to be there, by making Coda's games different and more than Coda ever wanted them to be. He betrayed Coda's trust and kept doing so to such a degree that Coda completely cuts ties with Reedon. That's how badly Reedon fucked up that relationship. There was this girl I used to know, used to be friends with. She was named after a flower, and she was really kind. We were both like James A. Castor and Jay Schlatt and shit. And uh, I knew her from around February of 2021 to July that same year. Uh, I met her because I joined a Discord server of a stream I'd associated myself with, and I just kind of stayed there. 2020 had been great for me, and maybe the rather new 2021 would be better, and I could meet some new and interesting people. And I did in that server. But then in July, I had a falling out with that streamer, a streamer I would previously have considered myself really, really close to, and just as quickly as I was banned from the server, those brilliant and amazing people I knew fizzled away, the girl named after a flower included. I lost touch with a lot of brilliant artists and other creators. The girl named after a flower actually acted in plays about three or so hours from where I live. I had this idea that maybe I could go see a show someday since it was really close, I could probably get a bus there.
The Beginner's Guide's penultimate level, the tower, for all intents and purposes, is Davy coming to terms of how he failed Kodo as a friend. But he tries to defend himself. He explains why he did things the way he did. He wanted to understand how Kodo could put his wholeness in its art. The fact that he didn't depend on the validation of others fascinated Davy. In a similar way, it probably fascinated a lot of people who were playing the game. I am the only person to blame for why I lost touch with all those people, dozens if not more of them, and even the ones I still keep in touch with there's a tinge of animosity from them, another streamer in particular makes me feel nauseous to be around because of his initial reaction. I honestly felt nauseous writing this so they still feel nauseous recording it. I don't know if uploading this video is such a good idea honestly. I don't want everyone who watches my content to know how much of a massive cunt I am. I kept looking back at my time there while I was having fun, maybe it was better off with me gone. I remember the going out to a flower was interested in Twitch streaming and she had this brilliant idea for a series based off a Wilbur album that I found so captivating. I wanted to see it and I'd offered to help like however I could at like every single opportunity. But I think I offered to help a bit too often. I think I offered to like read scripts in the sort so much it probably became obtrusive. And I went about my own personal struggles so much. It, it's so egotistical of me. Just because no one tells you that you're being an asshole doesn't mean you're not being an asshole. That was a lesson I thought I'd already learned. I don't think I was ever considerate enough to anyone in that server. At least I'd never showed it if I was. I don't... And realizing all these things months after the friendship was basically gone was... It just felt like I'd failed everyone in that server. And I was instantly brought back to this game. While I had been trying to understand someone through their private art, I realized that just like Davy, I wasn't considerate enough to the real fucking people. I was too preoccupied on myself. Yes, in a different way to Davy, but the point still stands. I had failed them. All of them. No matter how good my intentions were, no matter how much I wanted that Discord to be a more accepting place than it already was, a more comfortable place to be in than it already was, I still fucked up. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned that. The reason that we fell out was because of my opinions on this fucking Discord. That's the reason. Opinions I could have and should have kept to myself and should have added on so heavily. If I had to open my bloody mouth, I should have said it in a polite way. I realise now, far too far in hindsight, that I've relied on that server to make me feel better about myself. I felt better when I talked to the people there, from the girl of a flower for a name or an artist that was obsessed with drawing mushrooms or the streamer who just wanted to make a comfortable place for people to chill out. I'd go to that server or someone from there every day at a wobble, every time I felt a bit closer to falling off that endless abyss, every time I wanted to destroy the machine. I realised after it ended, after everyone started replying to my messages or the ones who did seemed, to, seemed like they couldn't care less, I didn't change since I was in that server. I thought I had, I convinced myself that I was getting better, I convinced myself I was treating the people around me better, I wasn't being such a wreck, I was being a better person, and then they were gone, I was left with myself and all that hatred.
I'm sure that when I was messaging any of those people, they must have felt ill. I needed something none of them ever had. I need to like myself. How could any of them fucking solve that? How could one idiot think that people liking me was what it takes to be worth it? Why am I so focused on other people and never on myself? I did something really fucking stupid. I destroyed one of the best friendships I had ever had. Not just that friendship, the friendship of everyone I knew connected to that streamer. A dozen, uh, more than a dozen people I once knew and cared about gone from my life because I hate myself, but I took it out on them. I don't know why I'm making this video. The beginner's guide ends with Davey wanting to tell Coda that he's sorry, but he has no other way to do so than to publicize his work again, do exactly what he had done before, betray Coda's trust again. And that's kind of what I'm doing too. I understand how I failed. I understand how badly I fucked up. Jesus Christ, I fuck up massively. But does this apology mean anything? Is this even an apology? Will, will I ever get to talk to any of those amazing people, those talented artists, any of them ever again? I felt okay in that server. I felt like I was a person. I felt more in this nothingness that I almost always feel. I felt less like I hated myself, even if I know it wasn't true. And while I know it's so selfish, I want to go back to that ignorance, back to that lie I would tell myself, because I would believe it. And being in a lie is so much better than being where I am right now. Because being where I am right now, I am failing, and I can feel it. And I hate it. And I hate me. I know this is an inherently awful thing to do, a thing no one should want to do, but I, I just want that place again, a place where I can lie to myself, that I was a person, not just an annoyance. The in-person friends I do have left go on cinema trips without me on guys whole day outs because they don't want to deal with my bullshit. I don't blame them, but I want I want a I want a place where I could feel that where I could feel I want a place where I could lie to myself again. Where I, where I can go I want, just want to go back to that and I'm sorry that I threw it away. I sound like an addict. I feel exactly the same way da as, as Davey did. I even use the same analogy. I'm even using the same visuals. The beginner's guide had left a much bigger impact on me than I thought. I have made parallels to David in this script that I haven't, that I didn't realize until I replayed the game after I'd, after I'd written the first draft. And when I didn't realize it the first time I played it, I've never felt more represented and related to than in the ending of this game. Davy's final speech is one I really should have analyzed and gone through before. Maybe if I had, I wouldn't be here. I want to feel that wholeness again, the same wholeness Davy describes as one that I felt in that server and those people. We were all struggling as people, but it felt so nice there. It felt like a break, it felt like a safe place where all of my friends that I pretended to care could fuck off. I don't need them when I have that server, but now I don't, and I don't feel that wholeness anymore, and I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I want to know how to be this good person, how to be one of those good people in the server like that girl, the, the girl's name for flower. I want to be good like she was, I want to be talented like she was, I want to feel whole like it seems she did. I want to know how to not hate myself and everything I create and every single thing I do. Do I have to say sorry? Because I am. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work, is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything, and so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, will you start making games again? Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please. Start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to, how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading. And all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay.
It's not like people never tell me I'm a good person. I get told it by every friend I still know, I get told it by my boss, I get told to make good content every day a video comes out. My channel has never been more popular and it's great, it's fantastic even. I just wish I could have made myself stop, made myself stop complaining about the server, made myself understand in the moment how brilliant it was, made myself understand how much I loved the people there despite their flaws because we were all flawed and that made it even more comfortable even. I wish I could talk to Poppy again. Was I jealous of all of their creativity? Was that it? I mean, so many people there were creatives and they were better than me, but was that it? I, I kind of live off of external validation. It's not a healthy concept, but don't we need the validation of others to keep ourselves in line to make sure that we're not fucking up? I want to shift the blame off to so many other people. I want to shift it onto the streamer for not making my own personal utopia, but that's as flimsy and dumb as it fucking sounds. I want to blame it on the people I knew in that server for not stopping me sooner, but it all happened so quickly. It's like it's their job. I want to blame those people for not making my own issues apparent to me, but I can't expect that of people. I want to blame the people in my life who backed me and supported my outcry against them, but they never had the full picture. I didn't have the full picture. The full picture was I, Gabriel Oliver, was too selfish and self-absorbed to realize how fucking lucky I had it. I threw away what I had, lost touch with people I loved, and people I trusted, and people I cared about, and people who cared about me, and somebody trusted me. And I threw it away. Why did I make this video? Not for sympathy. I fully know that I put myself in this situation. I alone am the one to. I alone am the one to blame. Did I make this as some kind of way to atone? Maybe by putting my sins on display for the 40 or so people who consistently watch my videos about my flaws and mistakes, that makes it better or something. Did I think? Did, did I think making this video, one of them would see it? I mean, I'd be kidding myself if I did. Most of them hate me, none of them talk to me, so why would they watch my dumb fucking YouTube video? Did I make it just because I hate myself so much I'm trying to convince everyone who watches this video to agree with me? I mean, it's not like this type of video is a norm for my channel. Yes, my content is personal, but never this personal. Am I doing this just so I can convince everyone that I'm this asshole that I see myself as? The Beginner's Guide is a game that has always been so personal to me even before I was a creator. And seeing it now, I wish I had seen its messages sooner. Understand how Davey failed sooner. I don't like how scarily close I feel to him. I don't like standing here so close to a man who betrayed his friend and I knew that and I still did it myself. I guess I'm gonna try and enjoy what I have more. I'm losing touch with more people now than ever, although the other examples are much more out of my personal control. That was one of my excuses, actually. I, I most related to Davey in the way that he crafted a narrative around Coda in his games, a narrative that Coda was depressed, but he never was. And I found myself doing the same thing to justify how shittily I treated those people. Why well, I could have done this, or him doing this was nefarious, or them doing this was an overreaction, yada yada, fucking yada. It's pathetic, I know, but I still did it. I'm not proud of it. I'm really not, but I still did it. I want to take it back. Of course I want to take it back, but I can't, and I'm just stuck here. Is it normal to rely on other people this much? Is it healthy? Does it seem healthy? I don't feel healthy. Can't be. Sorry. Is it right that I feel so much hate towards those people for not keeping in touch with me? Oh, I can't be. Fuck. 
it's so strange. I understand what I did wrong. I understand that it's wrong to sit here wallowing. I understand that I shouldn't want to lie to myself, and I still am. I still sit here. I still wrote this and tweaked it, and I'm still recording it. I'm still going to edit it. As I sit here, it just became the 12th of September. It was 3.42 a.m. as I wrote this, and it is the 14th of September at 11 p.m. as I record it, and... It'll be even further down the line. I'll be editing it, and potentially years in the future, you're watching it. I am so worried that this video will come out, and everyone will see what I see. And I'll see Gabriel the shitty person, Gabriel the fake creator, Gabriel the bad friend. I'm hoping that if I do ever press the upload button, that I'm wrong. That I am getting better as a person. I am actually progressing. I'm not tricking myself again like I did before. I'm praying that everyone who calls me a good person, I'm praying that they're actually fucking right. We'll see, I guess. This house cleaning game is my favorite moment in the whole game. My favorite song, my favorite of Coda's games, my favorite everything. Davey, while well, he doesn't narrate the whole thing, he takes a step back on his tinkering for this one. You just go around this house cleaning. No matter what you do, there'll always be something next that needs to be cleaned. And I know that seems like a pretty horrifying concept, but there's someone else here. Yeah, it's just a random NPC, but just having this presence and this person to talk to, combined with the music and the warmer atmosphere, it makes the monotony of this house game so much different to the monotony of climbing those stairs so different to the monotony of waiting alone in a prison. This kind of monotony is the kind I don't mind. I honestly prefer it in its original state, a state not edited by Davey where the game goes on forever. Yet the world outside is cold and it can hurt, but there's this... I mean, why go outside into the world when there's always something you haven't done at home? Not clean your room or take out the trash or the dishes or walk the dogs or fed the snakes or water your plants or put a wash on or sort out all your clothes or had a bath or shower. I yet. do this menial bullshit forever, as long as it was with people that I cared about. And while I've lost almost all of those people that I used to know, I knew in that server, I'm meeting new ones. And even though school sucks and work sucks and every day feels like it's blending together, this menial mediocrity is made a hell of a lot better by the people around me. All I can do now is learn from the mistakes I made in that server. I hope the people there do too.